Hello everyone and welcome back to Anime on Draft episode 60. We uh, we got Ma- uh, Manga Mark back with us this week. So <laughs> well, welcome, welcome back, call Mark. Him before <laughs> yeah, that. What, <laughs> what, was that what did you think be? I was going to call him? You were like, we got met ma- and, and then you stopped. You stopped yourself. <laughs> Yeah, yeah I was just saying mega, mega mark. Oh. What were you guys calling me before while I was gone? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of things. Uh, shit. Yeah, yeah, a lot, a lot of things. That's right. <laughs> uh, and as you heard as well, we have Rolando here. Yo. The uh, the fourth Avenger is still MIA, so uh, he no doesn't update feel on too that. good, Mr. Stark. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, too soon. <laughs> fade him. Fade him. Um, shit. <laughs> Regardless, we have a jam-packed, awesome episode this week. Um, tons of new shows, uh, a lot of shows that we're watching and we'll talk about. Uh, in particular, uh, Attack on Titan. I almost said anime on draft. I'm like, yeah, we're watching Oh, that. yeah. <laughs> we're talking about that anime on draft anime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Episode See, that's when you know we've made it. They make they make an, uh, an anime about us. <laughs> yeah, talking about anime. How meta is that? That is so Shit. meta. Shit. Summer um, 2027. <laughs> before uh, before we get to that, though, uh, what we're going to do, as always, is talk about our beer, our weekly pairing, and it's going to be the North Coast Brewing Scrimshaw. Mm. And apparently Mark has never held a Scrimshaw before. So oh, no. I didn't even know that, what a Scrimshaw take, was, man. Oh, I had to Google man. it. Take that as you will. What is yeah. it, Mark? What's a Scrimshaw? Yeah, what is the Google definition? Uh, it said a Scrimshaw adorn horn or tooth or something like that. Yeah. So literally the, the word Scrimshaw is in the definition. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know it's a good word, right? Right, right. <laughs> oh, okay, no. Adorned uh, whalebone ivory shells with uh, carved or colored designs. You've never held one in your hand? Nah, man, never held a scrimshaw. Wow. wow. But until now, wow. until now. Oh. Yeah, he's got the authentic thing now. How's it feel? Uh, it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something, but <laughs> I'll save that for the, the color of the beer. <laughs> oh, for the color. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the color. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, this thing is like, it, it's, it's a nice golden yellow. It's been a while since I've seen such you know, like clear yellow and like nice colored. Yeah, we don't beer drink many like this, right? You no. can actually see through it. This is pretty healthy, right, Drew? I mean, you're the one in medical. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This, I mean, looks, this, this looks healthy, <laughs> except for the bubbling. Well, yeah, you might want no, to. No, you can have out. a little bit of bubbling. You can have a little of that. that. It's you know a little froth on the top, and you know didn't, didn't hurt anybody. <laughs> a little froth. You know, it's like perfect <laughs> when when you when all that froth and bubbles cover the the full you know the top the full bowl. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Someone's car right, is getting weird. Someone's car is just going on. Their alarm is going off in the background. Oh, uh, it's not me. I do have a window okay. open because yeah. it, is, it is like a hundred degrees in my house. Yeah, it's it cooler is, it is in so my house hot. than it is outside. It sucks. And that's why this that's why this beer is great, guys. It brought us back. I brought us back. Yeah. <laughs> um oh. I actually did choose this beer because of the hot weather. Uh-huh. Right. I meant to say it's cooler outside than inside. There we go. Yeah. I agree with that. Mm. Fuck the heat. But um the beer tastes good, especially that it's hot. Yeah. Outside. This is definitely not that the beer is hot. A pilsner, that's for <laughs> sure. You got that nice, very crisp, crisp. taste. Mm. Is, it, is that the word like for pilsners? It's I feel like that's the go-to word, crisp. Crisp. I think so. Yeah, yeah. I would yeah. say so. I mean, that's like immediately what you think about it. It's like it's, it's kind of cools you down a little bit. It's got like take, a little bit of a sharp. You take a sip and you just when you're done with it, you just go. Ah. Mm. That's how you know. That's how you know it's Chris right yeah. there. Exactly. <laughs> this is good. This is very tasty. Tasty Ooh, approved. This is a mark. It's tasty. Yeah, tasty approved. I do like the head of it though. It's like got like a nice, perfect, like thin film ahead that has mm-hmm. stayed there for a number of minutes too. It's also got like so a lot of pilsners tend to have that very strong aftertaste of malt and Mm -hmm. you know various Mm -hmm. other um the just beer ingredient yeah corn flavors this one is pretty you know laid back and it's kind of like nice and refreshing 
Yeah. Because I, I, I think it would detract from how refreshing it was if you had to deal with that kind of aftertaste. I know you you drink with the cheaper style of this beer and you're just like, Ugh, how do I get this taste out of my mouth? Oh, I drink more of it and then I don't <laughs> <Yeah>. care. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a feel I feel like uh I feel like the the taste of it is very um kind of easy going there's not like a whole lot like you like you said you don't get a whole lot of that like multi flavor mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. that like um that weedy flavor either like, it's very kind of not like I don't I wouldn't say it's balanced it's almost like on the lower end though there's there's not like an entire like mouthful of flavor though. I feel like that's what I'm thinking. Well, and there's some, I think the simplicity kind of aids it. It's just like, you just want yeah. something simple. You don't want something, you know, that's slamming your taste buds. Every, every sip you take, you're like, no, I'm, I'm hot. I want yeah. something cool and crisp. We keep bringing that up. <laughs> oh, crisp. And I, I, I don't need it to be needed to be out of control flavor wise. I just want it to be good. And yeah. that's what, that's what this is. I agree. Well, I'll try finish. <laughs> yeah. Well, Wando, uh, you picked it. Let's have you start with your rating out of five. Out of five. Out of five whole points. Out of five points. Um. Uh. This is pretty good. I like it. It. It's it's a very light tasting beer, and I think that's probably something that's really nice on a hot day like today. I Any, mean, it's just in general, but uh. Mm-hmm. I would, um, I would say I would give this a three point two five. All right, five, huh? Not bad for a mm-hmm. simple tasting beer. Manga, 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 Mark. <laughs> Is that my nickname now? What's your right. uh, manga, manga, Mark? Yeah, manga, I was. Manga, I was thinking manga. the same. I, I was kind of gonna throw it out like a three point five. Seems like a pretty like solid uh solid yeah it's like a solid beer it's nice and nice and refreshing it's crisp i think it doesn't do a whole lot for my palate like i feel like i i almost want a little bit more um Mm -hmm. but it is like you know it is like your very basic pilsner it is nice and um got a light flavor to it not a whole lot on the aftertaste um so yeah i'll I'll go with like a three five i think it's good very good solid I agree with you, Mark. I'm going to go with the 3.5 number there. It's excellent for the above reasons. It's not, you know, it's not the best beer I've ever had, but it's it's perfect right now, and it's kind of exactly what I want. So that might be affecting my uh, rating, but I don't know. It's simple. It's clean, crisp. I like it. Uh, 3.5. But, but, but if also, it wasn't, uh, if it wasn't hot. <laughs> well, yeah, then, if it wasn't know, hot. No, I one. Think that, that would be the only time I really would want to drink this is like if it's like super hot. I mean, granted, I, I've been in Mexico and it's been like, you know, sweltering heat and I'm sweating my balls off. So this would be this would have been great. But I did have like a lot of Mexican beer over there. So, I mean, it's it kind of would have just kind of blended in. I think it get like at a point when it gets too hot, you just like don't really taste a whole lot. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And I feel like that's probably what makes this beer good. That Appealing. it's simple. Yeah. Yep. I agree. I agree. So go out and try it. The uh, Scribshaw. Hold one in your hands. Uh, just like Mark. Oh, yeah. Uh, Do it. finally done. <laughs> um, I feel complete. Moving on. <laughs> good. Very good. Uh, moving on. Uh, we are going to talk about our first anime uh, today. It's the Attack on Titan episode thirty nine. I believe it's entitled Pain. Yes. Um, a bunch, a bunch of stuff happened this episode, and it was, uh, it was really awesome. There's a ton of action, and it cliffhangers you in like four different directions. You're like, what, what? And you just it leaves you like craving for more. Um, so I guess, Rolando, we can start with you. Uh, what did you think about this episode? Do you want to give like a brief recap or you just want to jump right into some of the topics that we have here? I think we can just jump right into it. Um, this this episode was pretty jam-packed in terms of action. And I thought that the whole, the, the whole like fight scene, the chase scene, you know, between Levi and Kenny yeah. and Kenny's group, I thought that was yeah. like really cool. Like it was really fun to awesome. watch. Like the yeah. whole vibe I got from this episode was like 
Western, but it's like kind of a steampunkish Western because it's yeah. Attack on Titan. So I thought it was pretty cool to see all of this stuff like in a like you see like the 3D gear and like all of these fighting scenes not with Titans. Mm-hmm. It's with just people. So I just where you, well, you that's get what the, makes it kind of yeah. awesome. It makes it awesome because I. It, the 3D maneuver gear allows for some crazy fight choreography and like the weapons that they have as well make it like those those guys uh, from Kenny's group are shooting where Levi has swords and you get like kind of the the he makes up for the range or the lack of range like with the maneuver gear. He was killing people with that, which is crazy. Like, how do you aim that like with your hips? Yeah. And aim it like with the efficiency of a gun. But, you know, he's a badass. So he's doing that. Um, he's, you know, flying around the city, all the different action views are just really well done. Um, and you get like goosebumps kind of watching it because you're like, yeah, this is fucking awesome. And of course, like movie logic where you're just like, how are his like internal organs not all like destroyed and like <laughs> him landing on his legs and shit at that speed in the bar? Yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking too. When he landed in the bar, I was like, whoa, okay. I mean, he's completely fine. All right. That was cool though. <laughs> I mean, like some of that choreography was awesome. And the camera work, too, was like just as good mm-hmm. to be able to keep up with all the action and, you know, see see like close ups on his face and, you know, kind of like you get those like worry shots. I thought it was really well done. That first couple of minutes was awesome. Uh, then it really sets you up for like an awesome episode, too, because it kind of slows down a little bit from there. But you're just like right. amped up. You're just like th- that was like so cool. And you're like living off that excitement like through the rest of the episode when they're just really talking and um divulging new plot points which is obviously important but uh it's also fun to have you know a lot of action as well so Mm -hmm. um a couple of the uh, topics we had um we get a revelation about historia and that she is the true blood heiress to what is it the rice rice family rice rice Rice, i you know some anglo name um and that she is actually reunited with the head of the family at the very end of the episode. Um, what did you think of that scene? I thought it was it was it's kind of strange because they have like the true king in that Illuminati room. And then they have like that guy uh, in like who who the fuck knows that he's in trust somewhere with Historia. Like what, what mm-hmm. do you guys think of what's going on with that? So I've read the manga so I'll kind of withhold a little bit, Rolando. Uh, <laughs> so I'm not going to talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to like say too much <laughs> as of like where we are right now. Um, mm-hmm. But I do know, I, I like, I like where it's, where it's going now. Uh, okay. I, like I'm excited. It seems like it'll, it kind of like reinvigorates um, that mystery element, you know, especially like after mm-hmm. you find out that there's Titans in the wall from the last season. Yeah. Then it's like, well, shit, like, where do we go from now? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, and, and before we talk about some more, we uh, we are actually going to ask you, Mark, and this is like kind of where your nickname was born of uh, Manga Mark. But uh, we were talking about if they're going to be able to finish like the entire manga this season. Do you think that's possible from where we're at or uh, how many episodes is it going to be? I, I'm not sure. What is it going to be? I think it's I think it. I want to say it's 24, but let me look it up. Attack on Titan. Uh, yeah. Six. Six. Unknown. Six. Unknown. Yeah, like one or, maybe like three at least. <laughs> at least three. At least three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I think they'll be able to finish this arc for sure and then get into some more of it afterwards. I, I kind of stopped maybe like 15 chapters after where this current art ends i think mm-hmm. if i remember correctly um so yeah they'll definitely be able to finish this and then after that it starts getting into you know not so much like less interesting stuff it, it sort of it kind of like diverges a little bit but yeah yeah, yeah. well it, it'll this, this starts this arc will definitely finish okay okay but i digress I don't know. Rolando, what did, what did you think? What did you think about them introducing Rice and uh, Historia? That well, connection? I I already thought that Hist- Historia was like somehow related to the royal family from last season just mm. because of the whole mm-hmm. foreshadowing they had, you know, with like the imagery and the ending song. And yeah. 
the whole how they're making a big deal about her. And then, Drew, you even said last year, like when we talked about season two, how they like to use like blonde, um, in, like blonde hair for royalty and that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So it was already like something that I had assumed that she's somehow related to the mm-hmm. royal family. Like otherwise, like why would the whole church know about her? Why would it even matter? Mm-hmm. Like who she was. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Definitely interesting. So who who knows what uh, the implication? I I they keep showing that like Illuminati chamber room. I just like really want to know what's going on there like especially now with they throw you this curveball of rice who's supposed to be like the true king or something and then you have this guy like with i just keep calling the illuminati but it's it's <laughs> gonna, when we figure it out i mean i'm sure it'll be interesting i just it's like i want to know i want to know that right the, now is that the church of the like the church of the wall people i i don't know i they make it sound like they are in charge of everything it's like we have the military police on this you know we just captured uh aaron and uh, Historia, so they, they obviously have some sort of influence high up. I don't know if it's like the true king. I don't know if it's like I also the said behind the scenes shadow cult, but that Aaron's going to get eaten. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know if that's to like share Titan power or just they're going to kill him by feeding him to a Titan. Or maybe they get well, more we, power. We saw how well that worked in season one. I mean, that unlocked his <laughs> Titan powers. They get more so. Titan powers by eating other Titans. That's how oh, that guy shit. grew so big. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, anyway. what was it? I, I refresh my memory. What was the reason between be, uh, behind uh, Aaron's training? What was he trying to accomplish when uh, Hanja like, cut him out of that thing? He was they want the wall. Into, the wall right? Yeah. They want to see if he can produce the wall material, and he can't even go back into Titan form. Yeah, and his fucking butt sticks out of his, of his Titan. <laughs> He's all just skin love- and bones. He's skin and bones. <laughs> I just love how she's like, quick, draw his face. <laughs> the fucking <laughs> face is just peeling off. His eyes like hanging out. <laughs> yeah. uh, I do like the way that they call back a lot of um, a lot of things in this in this episode, or at least in this new season. Where um, I forget that one dude's name. He was like, "God damn it, I have to play the bait again." <laughs> He's like, "I'm sick of this." Yeah. And then they do more interrogation slash torture, and they're like, learning better now. <laughs> that was that was a really interesting scene when he he starts talking about like what he's done um, in order to preserve the life inside the wall. So he shows like it. It seemed like it, it mentioned Armin's family for some reason. Uh, and he they killed his family. Did you guys like catch on to that? I don't know if it was like the hot air balloon or like the family. I think it was the, so, the teacher, I think. Yeah, so, something. But it it it. Kind of built on like what we had learned about Armin's past, so I thought that was a little crazy, but all the shit that like this cult or like the government or whoever has done to kind of keep humanity in the walls. And he's, he even says, I think at one point, it's like the world is so huge. Um, or maybe it was Levi who said that, but when we found out the world was so huge, it like, I forget the exact wording of it, but there's more going on outside the walls, which is the big takeaway from that. Oh, and for some right. reason, the, the leaders of humanity want to keep humanity in check inside the wall. So are, are you talking about the conversation between Levi and Kenny at the bar? Where yeah, Kenny, I kind of mixed up two scenes, but yeah. Yeah, where Kenny was saying, like, I know why you're fighting. It's because the world is a lot bigger than we initially envisioned. Like, there's... Yeah. There, I think there's definitely something behind that that statement there because we don't know exactly what motivates Kenny and, honestly, mm-hmm. Levi as well because, like, mm-hmm. why why would the world be a lot... You know, it being a lot bigger than they initially imagined have to do with the, what would what does that have to do with their motivations yeah and and the way i think about that too is like kenny is kind of like this selfish murderer who just kind of does what he wants but when he learns of like a higher power or whatever or what's out there he then he is going to use them for some alternative motive that we don't know about yet and causes him to organize with those people which is very strange for that type of character so whatever's out there has got to be like like mind blowing or crazy or super important or whatever. And it's gotta be, you know, pretty intense for it to 
change someone that much from a crazy psycho murderer to working with one agent of this secret society or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause the dude just seems outright like insane as, a, as of right now, but definitely, yeah, there's, yeah. you know, there, you know, there's gotta be some sort of ulterior motive. Right. Yeah. Um, one other big kind of reveal uh, that we got in this episode is Levi's last name. Um, his last name is Ackerman, which is, uh, a name that we're familiar with, right, guys? Uh, dun, 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 so man. happens to be Mikasa's last name. What? So, no way. What are the implications behind that? And then, Rolando, I know you mentioned it earlier, but it's like, oh, we got the two Asian-looking people who are doing the most badass things, and they're suddenly related. Like, oh, there's a, <laughs> a big shock. Oh, there's a yeah, and they they already looked like they were related because like there weren't really any other characters that were drawn in a similar way to them. Because mm-hmm. I remember, I think it's the first season where it says like Mikasa's rare because she's Asian. Like people hadn't seen like an Asian person before, and then everyone's super Anglo except for Levi, who's you know same color hair as Mikasa, same sort of style, and super badass. It's like, what are you? What are you guys trying to say? <laughs> what do <are> you? <laughs> what's the deal behind this? Um, so I wasn't too shocked to kind of learn that. I just thought it was pretty interesting that they decide to do this now. But mm-hmm. I mean, I guess now that Kenny's It, it here, felt random, right? It, it it did for a bit because it's like, like, what does this have to do with the plot that they're related? But I guess, yeah. you know, like there's gotta yeah. be something important about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah very strange. Um, Finally, kind of the last thing uh, I was going to talk about is Armin gets blood on his hands and saves Jean. Um, oh, that little bitch. So he's a murderer now. And Levi's like, yeah, good job, dude. You fucking killed somebody. <laughs> no, the best the thought- best part about that situation is like Armin is like clearly experiencing some sort of like PTSD and it's just like mm-hmm. and then John's just like, oh, Oh, I guess I should have done what I was supposed to. It's like, yeah, you're always like this little bitch that's always complaining about everything, but you always (laughs) Always can't do whatever you're supposed to. It's like, I guess they're trying to be like, oh, he's really just a, you know, a really human character that like just can't do bad things. It's like, all right. Except that that no one likes John to begin with. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he's no redeeming qualities. He has no redeeming qualities. If you call that his redeeming quality, then it's just like, great, he is a pacifist. Why is he in the scouts? He's a big bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, I would not have been sad if that guy died. That's that's terrible to say, but really, he, he kind of serves no purpose, purpose as, besides being a little bitch. Well, this show, yeah. this show has never been shy about killing characters off, but like you kind of said, Mark, I w- really wouldn't care if Sean died. Like when when that scene like faded out and there was like the blood splatters on like the the camera or whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. um, I was like, oh shit, John's John's dead. Uh, oh well. And yeah. then it, <laughs> it obviously it, it shows you what actually happens. You're like, well, that was kind of badass. You feel better about Armin, but you're like, fucking bitch ass John, like getting out of this shit. Like, oh my god. And and you knew that something like that was gonna happen because they just set it up. Yeah. Like, yeah, Le- Le- Levi says we're gonna have to fight humans now, and then like Jean's pointing the sword at her, and he's like, "Oh, he's gonna end up fucked up." I can't. Like, oh, I'm gonna hesitate. <laughs> he's like, "Don't hesitate." And what's the first thing he does? You fucking hesitate. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, anything yeah. else you wanted to add for this episode, guys? I'm super pumped about, um, especially the way that this episode started off. Like, I'm like really pumped for this season. Uh, yeah, I mean, this season started off pretty just strong in general. Yeah. The action scenes are already looking amazing, which I mean, you would only hope so with, when they have like unlimited resources and yeah. budget, unlimited so. budget, budget works. It's a white Fox, budget, right? Yeah. Um, it's wit or wit, wit, um, white Fox is a Steins gate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. we talked about this last week, Mark, but drew and I mm-hmm. both noticed that the animation seemed to be a bit different this season. Did you kind of get anything? Yeah. I think I thought so. I mean, I, I only watched a few episodes of last season, um, so I didn't watch it every week. But yeah, I definitely noticed it looked a little bit different. It looked sharper. I don't know. We were saying they look the characters look a little bit mature, a little bit more angular in their face, which makes mm-hmm. them look a little bit older. And I think it's appropriate for the content that's happening during this season. So Yeah. 
Very cool. Nice. Um, and I know, Mark, you said, too, that the uh, the opening and ending were a little underwhelming for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, after, you know, last season's and yeah. how, lit, how lit they were, I, yeah. I, I was expecting something a little more dramatic, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mentioned it last week. I like the opening. The ending is kind of dumb. But what can you do? What can you do? Can you do? Well, uh, that's our weekly pairing, guys. Remember the uh, North Coast Brewing Scrimshaw, go hold one. And then oh. uh, Attack on Titan, episode uh, 39. <laughs> Looking forward to the oh. next one. But let's uh, let's jump into happy hour. Uh, first show uh, we were going to talk about, it looks like we have uh, Hanabato up first. So episode five. It took him five episodes to get to the Yuri. Oh, like, but it's here. Oh, it's yeah. here. We made it. <laughs> so let me, I braid, uh, let me braid your hair. I want to, I want to just preface this with like, so we talked, we talked about it a little bit last week, how a lot of people are saying that this is deviating from the manga. And so from what I've seen about how they, how they're handling Connie's character compared to the manga is that she's supposed to be someone that motivates Hanasaki into playing um, like, you know, getting, you know, playing badminton and like, you know, becoming better, like she in a positive way, but mm-hmm. it, it now it looks like they're completely changing the story because now it seems like she's just Almost baiting her on her. Yeah, and antagonizing her. So I'm just like wondering what's mm-hmm. going on here. Yeah. I thought that too. Well, I mean, I haven't read the manga, but I, I, either. I thought it was kind of weird that this girl who knew nothing about her and had been I'm apparently trained by her mom is like just completely antagonizing her and has something like his vendetta against her, even though she probably never really knew her. Cause she, I mean, Hanasaki didn't compete on that like international level. Did she? No, no. So no. like, I, I don't know. I don't know if I, that really like, um, rivalry is really there. It seems, I mean, obviously it's one sided, but I don't know. I thought it was a little weird, I guess. It, it felt like there's, Forced drama now, like with the mom. Yeah, right. right. Especially well, and, with the scene, the back, like the flashback scenes where the mom seems like she's like nice. So I'm just really confused. Yeah. Well, and Connie, like even above that too, Connie's character is so fucking weird. Like mm-hmm. she'll be that super super intense, like on the badminton court or whatever, and then she'll be like obsessing, doting on like her fake mom, and then she'll be like in the bath with all those girls, and she's like ashamed and like giggly and weird. Her, her character is like all over the place. I, it's like I don't know what to think of her at all. You know, it's probably yeah. the how they're adapting it. I think is just probably bad. Yeah. I mean, that would make sense. Yeah. And I kind of talked about this when we were starting to talk about this show as well. But it's like everything feels really forced. It's like the the short haired girl, tomboy who's tall. It's like, oh, I work really hard, but no one sees that. They just see that I'm tall. And then like they resolve that in an episode. And then it's like, oh, I don't want to play badminton. Uh, My mom left me. I had mom issues. And then that's resolved in an episode. Now it's like, oh, let's throw another like curveball in here. Let's get this blonde Dutch chick. Um, she knows my mom and has a relationship with her. Let's, let's create another like source of drama. It's like, just, I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's so forced and it's like fake. Yeah. Like Mark, what, I, I know we kind of talked about it a couple weeks ago. Like what mm. did, what did you think about the whole issue with the mom and like how they've kind of portrayed it in the last couple? I, I didn't really expect it to, I don't know. I, I was hoping, I guess that it wouldn't go on so long. I, it's, I feel like this is like forced drama because it's, when are they going to start like actually introducing the, the mom and like, are, is there going to be any sort of redemption for the mom or are we just going to, are we supposed to hate the mom? You yeah. know, like are we, are we supposed to side with Hanasaki and, you mixed know, messaging, right? Yeah. It's very mixed. So I'm not entirely sure what, what we're supposed to feel and like where this is, is supposed this, to is be this going to end up, you know, this is gonna do. This is gonna end up being like Naruto, and with uh, Sasuke, uh, Sasuke and uh, his brother Itachi. <laughs> it's like I, I, I left you because I didn't want you to get sucked into all this bad. All, like, all yeah, this we drama. were fucking talking about <laughs> that course. like two weeks yeah. ago. It's just like it's gonna be some <laughs> stupid shit like that, and it's just like, why are we like, it, why are we doing this forced drama? Because they're sending a mixed message, especially with this last episode. 
because the mom is like super like nice except for the one instance where she's like if you're if you get good, I'll play you all you want. And it's just like, all right, well, that's kind of like a <laughs> weird thing to say to your like four year old child. <laughs> but like, um, it, everything else, You're like it seemed like she you, was you suck. caring <laughs> to her daughter, you know? So I yeah. was like super confused. And now knowing that it's essentially changed from the actual manga, one makes me want to read it. Although I don't want to, you know, spoil the, the whole the way the anime you know how i enjoy that right like Mm -hmm. more so it's it's like all right like i get it like this is apparently like this is the the mom's job this is her job to you know be in this world and she wanted to go out and train you know somebody else yeah but then again it's like when it comes back through connie that connie now has this like vendetta against hanasaki it almost seems like it's not so much about growth. It's almost like about um, Hanasaki kind of like just trying to overcome and beat down her unknown rival, I guess. Because it's like now Hanasaki figures out that, oh shit, like my mom abandoned me for this chick. So now I like, I have to play seriously. Yeah. But because Connie's like, (laughs) at the same time, why does Connie have a, like if she, abandon her daughter to teach her why does she have a vendetta against the daughter yeah i don't know that doesn't I, <laughs> that's that's that that's is, where i get lost i have to beat you it's about principle it's like okay I've what never, if she was I've crippled? never beaten you but you you <laughs> you came out of that vagina so i'm jealous of you <laughs> <laughs> and i didn't <laughs> it's i uh, i don't know i feel it feels like it's, oh, then- it's just like being forced and they're changing the story i guess is what I'm yeah. One more one more thing to add to that too is is that bullshit about Connie's past where she's like all alone in the house like I was all oh, alone and she yeah. saved me like oh yeah on, that like, whole thing where it's like can the tropes get any more like no no <laughs> Jesus the, Christ that, that triggered me a little bit because it's like oh I I was always alone no one would play with me it's like yeah you know who else was like that the main <laughs> character and she, right. and she got abandoned by her mother. Yeah, for you. <laughs> for you. Thanks so. a lot. Thanks for rubbing it <laughs> thanks, in. <laughs> thanks for making us not feel sorry for you. Yeah. I don't know. I, I hope there's some sort of redemption for the next episode. Maybe she is just playing or something. I don't know. Maybe she's trying to make Hanasaki better and seem like I, uh, um, she should have been chosen instead of Pony. I don't know. They've already like passed that boat by them leaving the trading camp already. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, anyway, uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, I, I still enjoy it. It's just it's super tropey for me and it's like so forced. But uh, anyway, moving yeah. on. Uh, let's talk about our other sports anime that we're kind of going over. I'm I kind of refuse to watch this. I don't really want to watch this, but uh, you guys are watching it. Uh, Harukana Receive. How how's the fan service uh, going, boys? It's going strong. It's going strong. <laughs> I mean, it is a fan bikini service, episode. Yeah. yeah. Do you mean every? Is there any like? (laughs) Oh no! Like like, this one's yeah. More so, this one was focused on them finding finding new bikinis and their love. Oh, their love. Oh yeah, this is this one was this is heavy confession. This is the confession episode. (laughs) Heavy Yuri. Oh oh yeah. Is there is there there any is there any sort of story to this or is it just (laughs) yeah nonsense? There's a story. There's a story. Yeah, it's about what's, two girls who love each other so much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, it's, they can't help but like, be gay for each other. <laughs> like, what, what What? else is there to say? <laughs> and they have to overcome, like, their, their differences in their past. And they got to learn to trust each uh, other and become uh, better players. It's, it's mm, two-sided. It's mm, two-sided. Mark mm, is actually telling okay. the truth right now. So. Yeah, I'm not trolling. So <laughs> He's not joking. <laughs> oh my god, that—that that was like TLDR of the show. No, but really, okay. it's more of like a—it's more slice of life, but yeah, sports and it's like a slice yeah. of life v sports anime slash a hint of rom com slash <laughs> hentai. No, <laughs> no, but no, maybe. <laughs> Well, are you guys enjoying it or it's just in mindless something you watch? I don't think I'm it's enjoying mindless. It. I, I yeah. like it. Uh, the So I would, in terms of 
like the actual plot and stuff, there yeah. there's like an underlying, I guess, goal in mind, but it's more about the interactions between the characters and how relationships mm-hmm. develop. So I would kind of mm-hmm. put it similar to a show like um, A Manchu, which is like a slice of life that's all about like this girl who is, like is new to a town and then trying to become friends with people. So this is kind of like a similar based on human emotion and relationship values, that kind of show. Yeah. Okay. It's definitely like, it's very lighthearted fun. Mm-hmm. It doesn't take like the sports side seriously, which is kind of like a good break after you get things like Hanabata. But I mean, it's, it's enjoyable. Okay. And there's Yuri. All right. And there's Yuri. And there, and it, yeah, well, there's that's always a plus, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the thing is, like, it's not blatant <laughs> Yuri. It's yeah. No. It's very uh, which what do you say like implied, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and not not just like we're gonna make two girls make out. It's like we're gonna make them. <laughs> it's not citrus. feel feel it's funny. We're gonna make them feel funny when they're around each other. Oh, mm. lots of blushing. Ooh. Oh yeah, Ooh. blushing. All right. <laughs> well, very cool. Um, you guys gonna stick with this one or? Yeah, yes. I'll keep watching it. Yeah. All right. Well, sounds good. So that's a uh, hard kind of receive. Um, another one uh, that we're kind of talking about. Did you get caught up with this one, Rolando? It's uh, cells at work. I have not caught up. No. Okay. Um, and Mark, I know you said uh, a little too unrealistic for you. Yeah. Yeah, when the red blood cell, when she scraped her, her hand or something and she started bleeding, I was like, what? Really? She can she can get a scratches. She's not just blood all the time. She is blood, though. So, <laughs> yeah, but like she is just literally you, you just can get over you blood. can get over like people being represented as cells. But that's like where you draw the line is, <laughs> yeah, is on <laughs> cells bleeding. <laughs> yeah. And they're like when when the enemies are like whenever the, the viruses die, they bleed too. wait, what? get out of here well, good well, all right <laughs> no all i'm right. just kidding uh i just i just haven't caught up yet i only watched the first two episodes yeah. the platelets were damn yeah. adorable though i have to say that oh they're the, they're the best and and that has spawned so much like internet fandom fan Seriously. art like there's so many it's, memes it's about that but don't, don't, <laughs> don't loot the platelets don't loot the platelets i don't know i don't know i don't know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that i do have to admit oh. yeah, it's pretty it's pretty funny I just no, love that they're all surrounding yeah. the stacks of like equipment and they can't get it down. Because <laughs> 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 it also like you know starts to question the whole like child labor <laughs> deal. Yeah, just like yeah. you're making all these kids do <laughs> fucking construction work in the body, <laughs> <laughs> doing pretty important work too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Any uh, repairs that need to go on, you know. Yeah, but uh, I, I mean, I like it. it. It's just it's mindless. You know, every week something different. Uh, this week, you guys will have to look forward to uh, food poisoning. That's what kind of goes on. Ooh, um, nice. So you, I do. <laughs> there is something. There's a a redditor every week who's in medical school, and he will like critique the episode based on like you know actual science, and he'll go yeah. over like what they explained and if it's true to to medical history or not. It's pretty cool. I mean, it, it's it's pretty close because, I mean, I work in the medical field as well. It's it, I mean, it's not like perfect, but how are you going to explain all the intricacies of, you know, the body in, you know, a 23 minute episode? It's just not like realistic. But I mean, it's, right, it's right, right. kind of close. It's, uh, you know, they do a good job with it. I, I appreciate it. So. Cool. Well, catch up, you guys. I uh, definitely recommend doing so. And then we talked about this last week, too, but the goddess is voicing the red blood cell. So. You gotta, right, you gotta right. watch her. Show show her some support. Show her some love. Is she waifu um, this uh, anime this season waifu or no? I don't know. She's pretty good. She's pretty good. The platelets though. Man. Oh, those are your waifu. <laughs> oh, those are waifu. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Platelet chan. Oh. What did we just say about looting the waifu the platelets? <laughs> uh moving on. Uh, what we did got a couple Sushio episodes. say Let's about just... looting his characters, dude? Uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, but uh, we got a couple episodes of Steins Gate to talk about, uh, 13, 14, and uh, 15. Um, I guess we can just 
talk in general. I mean, yeah. this week's episode in particular, there wasn't really anything going on other than Daru saying he moe moe QQs, uh, <laughs> uh, Miss Amane or whatever. <laughs> and uh, that that was like the, the culmination of the episode. And You didn't Susan get the cry. whole message about that? Mm, mm. Dude, yeah. that was a, be be yourself, be yourself. Even if you're a fat otaku nerd yeah <laughs> you can get a hot cosplay girl yeah that's all it takes that's all it takes mm. don't wear um, fedoras and take women out to fancy dinners that right. was so cringe that whole thing oh, oh yeah. it was so oh, bad <laughs> and, the, and the just the way that they set it up too with Maho and like hooking him up to that machine or whatever that was so stupid. Yeah, it was, it was, it was like watching uh, it was like poorly. watching a like a nineties sitcom montage. <laughs> That's what it felt like. But you know, you know what I'll say about it though, um, in in relationship to the first season as well. That's the kind of humor that this show had in the first season before shit went fucking nuts. So I'm hoping that they're kind of feeding off of that again. And it's like, oh, this is like this happy go lucky show and just so happens to be time travel or whatever. And now that we've gotten our weird like what was the the little girl who worked at the CRT shop like she, that was that weird episode. There is this weird episode with Daru and right. his his disaster of uh, of a love life or whatever you want to call it. And then hopefully now it's like. All right, let's start ramping things up. Maho's in Japan. She's going to start uh, working on the Time Leap machine. Yeah. Uh, Okabe might be going to America. So it's like, what's what's going to happen? And then they keep mentioning the hospital and um, issues going on there. So it's like, what's what's going to happen there? And then finally, the last thing is, what the fuck is up with Kagiri? And why is she standing on buildings in latex? Batman you know, what's, style. What's going on that's with that? The, that's the <laughs> foreshadowing you were just talking about. Yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> She's gonna fucking try and kill Daru and uh, Amane, dude. Yeah, yeah. you wanted like, you it. Can't, you can't. You can't be happy. You can't be happy without me being happy about my mommy. So I'm gonna murder I'm your gonna fucking murder your, your parents. parents. <laughs> yeah, that switching was creepy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we still That's... don't know that the whoever got kicked in the hand or whatever that that biker lady mm-hmm. or in the, in yeah. the suit, that dura ra ra lady and, is, and, it, and right. it yeah and is it uh you know is it that other professor yeah um, they also the, introduced the female the one yeah no 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 she had her the, hand the under, under her blankie oh right oh, susan yeah. mentions the the professor or some some dude from the future yeah the one that tortured her her vultures or whatever they were called yeah yeah Vultures, yeah, the whatever their group was called. Yeah, I don't remember that name, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's also yeah. the in in this latest episode how Suzuha's mother dies. It's just oh yeah, like, that was pretty why tragic. Are you guys just walking it in the open? Up. Why are they just walking Whoosh. in the open in the middle of the street just, with a bag of mom. groceries? <laughs> 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 She's just screaming. It's like we're in a fucking war zone. Let's uh, let's start yelling and running. Like, She's what? Got a bag of groceries and she gets gunned down by a drone. Like what? Yeah. I thought that yeah. was kind of just like wait. That was random as fuck. But like all right, I mean, okay. It's clearly a traumatic experience for her, but also <laughs> why was, was she a little doing sudden. that in first random. place? It was yeah. a little sudden. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the other two episodes, I I can't remember. Like I know one, it's like uh, they lose Kagiri. Yeah. Uh, after she has like mm-hmm. she has that revelation that, uh, or she remembers that she hears uh, the Mozart music. Yeah, and Maori is her, her adopted mom or whatever. Um, and then they, I think in the next episode they talked about like her PTSD and how she was going through treatments and that we think has to do kind of uh, with how she can be influenced or how she is being brainwashed. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. What else? What else kind of happened? I don't. I, wasn't I like, mean, Kagari uh, was revealed as the as one of the uh, the biker. The biker. Yeah. Yeah. Not the one that attacked them at Christmas that. though, because she was at that. Right. Right. right well, right. and they they even say that too. They they don't even like have you guessing that they like say like a minute later. It's like oh, they weren't the same because remember Kagari was there the whole time. Um, and then same with the laptop thing. Like she was mm-hmm. at the. The other place with Suzuha. So. To an alibi. Yeah. 
Yeah. Maybe they're all brainwashed. Oh. Oh, oh, oh Mark dropping the bombs oh. here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Making the assumptions here. Man. Well, I mean, there. actually, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, bless you. Um, what, what do you guys actually think is happening? I have no idea. It, it has something to do with like the university and their influence. It has something yeah. to do with Amadeus and people wanting that technology. And maybe it's they want Krisu because they know they she can make the time leap machine or whatever. She can make the time machine. It, it has something to do with that. But in in terms of like how they're going to bring it all together, I have no fucking idea. Well, yeah, <laughs> you, it's sure. funny you, you say that because in this episode when they show like whatever like research information on Kagari, it says Amade- Amadeus um like research subject number and then like it had like a code number on her so mm-hmm. i'm like she clearly has something to do with amadeus and whatever this organization that's been brainwashing her has something to do mm-hmm. with it as well so you might be onto something there yeah i mean maybe yeah. she was like you know implanted with amadeus's memories or you know in the future and by going back they're hoping to re-spark some of those you know memories or whatever or guys and hear hear me out on this one all right all right they they were finally able to combine human sexuality and like computers and <laughs> they bred amadeus somehow and kagiri is who we got because it looks like krisu and so that's what happened so you're so telling me you're saying that she is a human bred born from a version robot? human ai hybrid born from an ai that was recorded <laughs> from another human in the past yes and she's yes. going to the past yes in order to grow up to acquire that <laughs> <laughs> So you're Mind telling blown. me that's, a, that's an M that's an M Night Shyamalan twist that you guys would have never been able to catch on. But I, me, you know, I've I've got it down. You fucking idiots! Like, I'm I'm like I'm like three or four steps ahead of you oh, guys. Fuck. Like on every turn. Oh shit, dude! Wow. <laughs> you know what? At this point, I can't deny that you're wrong. You can't even argue yeah, it. You can't you even can. argue that M Night Shyamalan didn't work on this. <laughs> There's no evidence. <laughs> there is no evidence. He might he might be a, a wee bit hard. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Just maybe. Yeah. But and that's what he wanted everyone to know this episode. That's he wanted twist. everyone to know you you can you can be yourself. You can be moi moi qq about girls. Oh, and it, it's yeah. fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> but anyway. Um I hope I hope it starts ramping up soon um it, it's still fun to watch i don't ever regret watching it every week but i want like i want to know what's, what's happening you want to he wants to get right into the meat and bones that's right yeah. meat, and, meat and potatoes you give it to him the meat and scrimshaws oh <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah hold it go get one oh. and hold it in your hands pull it put your hands out mark yeah i'm holding it grab it mark <laughs> grab it by holding, the horn i'm holding it tightly I never let go. <laughs> anyway, um, last little bit of uh, housekeeping or announcements. Um, these dogs are about to bark. I apologize oh. if they bark. Barky bark. Oh. Maybe we should wait to figure oh. out. We should wait to finish the last section. It's fine. No, let Hi. it. Let let let, <laughs> let party bark, dude. But <laughs> party. <laughs> Let them play. <laughs> okay, I think I think they're good. Um, any uh, any other announcements, guys? I know we have here uh, Nichu Joe and Trigun are back on Crunchyroll. Um, yep. Yeah. Both both yeah, fun, like, cool what? shows. Both very different shows. <laughs> One's a <laughs> steampunk western, and the other's uh, or a space western. The other's uh, we should satire. We should do um, so. Like after we finish Monogatari, we should do like an older show like Trigun. Yeah. Yeah, or like Bebop or something. Yeah. Bebop. Because like those yeah. are classics. Like I Trigun is one of the first anime I've ever I ever watched. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's... It was on Tsunami. It used to be on Tsunami, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. One of the one of the very one of the OG original. shows. Yeah. It was always yeah. on late. Mm-hmm. And this is that was like the that was like a an era of really good anime that was on Toonami. Seriously. Like, I, I mean, not like they haven't had in general good sh- stuff, but mm-hmm. like the stuff they had like, like Gundam Wing and Oh yeah, they had Gundam Wing. The early Gundam, yeah. Dragon Ball they had, Z. They had reboot. Dragon Ball Z. Trigun, Code Lyoko. They had so much stuff. They had the little mini Gundam guys. I forget what that was called. They had Yu Yu Hakusho. Yu Yu Hakusho was oh, great. Oh, yeah. Um, they had a bunch of good, bunch of good anime. But, uh, anything else? Oh, uh, Mark, you have a movie release? Yeah, Makuya. Ma- Makuya. That, that came out uh, last week, and it, it's doing really well. It's actually won a... Uh, Fan- International Fantastic Film Fest Children's Award in mm. Busan or something, South Korea. So oh. uh, that's doing well, apparently. So what is it? Um, that is a film by PA Works and Mario Kata, who wrote the script. Oh, I, now yeah. I want to watch it. Yeah, I heard it. Uh, PA I think Works the people who boy. saw it at uh, Anime Expo said it was really good. Well, I mean, yeah, PA Works is like. Yeah. They haven't been very good recently, but the fact that it's they Mario still... Mario Kata uh, mm-hmm. wrote it is what interests me because she did do like um Anohana and Hanasaku Iroha. So Right. She also oh she also directed it too. Oh interesting. Mm-hmm. Mm, maybe yeah. I, maybe I'll go see it. Yeah, I want to go see it. Um let's go. Also Yeah, yeah, let's go. Uh, Mirai, Mirai, no Mirai. I think that came out too, and I don't think that's doing as well. That was um, from one of the uh, producers. Somebody from Ghibli uh, worked on that. Oh, wait, wasn't there also um, something that released recently, which was by? Um, it wasn't. It's not a Makoto Shinkai film, but it's all, like by the producers of Your Name. Yes. Uh, shit, I can't remember the name of it. It's um, something about like high fireworks or some something like that. Yes, you are right though. Uh, I th- it's probably it's called think- fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I cannot remember the name of it for the life of me. Is oh, is it called crazy. Hanabi? Because that's what fireworks is in Japanese. Is it? Like I bet you that's what it's called. Like I, that just seems like a thing. Well, either way. Yeah, either way. I think that that is supposed to be, um, I think it is called fireworks. Boom. 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 All right. In August. Yeah, that's in August. August. So there's a lot of stuff coming August out. Yeah. Well, should be, should be good. Um, and I know, like, I, th- I feel like we've said this, like, almost every anime for, like, the past three seasons, but it's, like, this is going to be the god season of anime coming up. But that's, like, what now a lot more people are saying about the next season. But Like, fall season? To... Yeah, they're saying it's, like, One Punch Man and, like, Attack on Titan continued and, like, Shokugeki and... Shokugeki's coming of... back next season? That's what I heard, but I, I could be totally off base. Oh, cause, cause, <laughs> I just I just remember people talking about like a ton of anime coming out on um, fall season. Because like I felt like this this season is a bit more of a sleeper good season because mm-hmm. if you think about it, what we have right now are a bunch of sequels of really good anime. So it's like you've got mm-hmm. Steins Gate Zero, you've got um, Attack on Titan. Um, and well, I know for yeah. this season, I'm I'm watching a lot more than I normally watch. Last season, it was like for me, it was slip pickings. There was like nothing that I really enjoyed. Um, but this season, there's there's a ton. Um, there's there's a, a ton lot of, of really good that comedy that, that are, season. That are surprisingly, good. oh yeah, I, the comedy shows this season are are pretty good. Very good. Uh, I started watching Grand Blue too, and that is that is pretty hilarious. I've only seen the first episode. It's very outrageous, though, and lots of, like, gratuitous male nudity. <laughs> well, I mean, so they don't show flip. male nudity. But. They don't show it, but it's just, like, every every other scene, it's like the dudes are just, like, getting naked because they're part of a dive club, and then that's just what they do after they drink. It uh, seems very... Funny. 
It seemed <laughs> to me, it seems a lot like the style of the old visual novel anime from like the early 2000s. So it's like if you ever watch something like Shuffle or like yeah, just like any of those old like visual novel anime, that's what it seems like because the main character moves to an island and mm-hmm. has a bunch of buds where there's like antics, but now he's there's like various love interests, aka his cousins, I guess. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's yeah. Like, <laughs> I mean that's this, expected. Like that's to be expected, right? So yeah, uh, yeah definitely. Yeah, of course. <laughs> the, the whole style and vibe of that show seems like that to me. Yeah, the uh, the third episode was was really really funny. There's a lot of really good gags in it, so. Uh, I think it's not on Crunchyroll either, which isn't really that surprising. Yeah. Um, but but uh, I'll keep watching that one too, though. Uh, are you still watching Asobi Asobasa, Yolanda? Yes. I haven't seen the latest episode, but I am watching that. Yes. That is another very good one. It was funny. Yeah. Drew, you should watch that one. If you, yeah, Drew, uh, if you just want to get high and like watch something your really ass off. stupid. By some really <laughs> dumb shit. That's the one. Yep. Okay. I'll, I'm making notes. Taking notes, guys. <laughs> yeah, you better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Um, well, I think that's that's all we have today, though, gentlemen. Um, cool. It's been it's it's been a pleasure it, as always. Um, who knows when we'll get our other member back? Hopefully soon. Um, but as day. soon as we as soon as we know, uh, we'll tell you. Um, but from all of us who are here with you uh, and to all you guys who are listening, thank you. Uh, please check out our WordPress, AnimeOnDraft.wordpress.com, Twitter at AnimeOnDraft, SoundCloud, iTunes, YouTube. Um, take a look, search for Anime on Draft and give us a listen. Uh, Instagram. If you're not already doing so. Instagram. What is it, Mark? It's the stupid name. It's uh, Anime on Draft Podcast. Oh, it's changed. It's it fixed. <laughs> stupid uh, it was changed name. With all, without yeah. all the under underscores. It's, yeah. it's less stupid. Good yep. job, Mark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right uh <laughs> this has been episode 60 guys uh and this is this is us signing out and we will catch you next time bye see ya bye.